A new law, the AB5, could completely crash and burn the music industry in California. As the fifth largest economy in the world and entertainment hub of the world, this is a big deal. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mix Best TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, check the info box down below for my mixing courses on ProMix Academy, free plugins, special offers, and discount. And if you want to support the channel, if the videos are helping you, click the join button and see all the perks of becoming a Mix Best TV member and access to exclusive content. Let's get to the video. Disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not sure this video will be up to date by the time it's published on this subject the new law AB5. So in this video, I just wanna aware all the musicians, all the producer, everybody in the music industry that is not aware of this, because this will, if not changed, will affect us all. Will affect the whole music industry in California, which is the largest in the world. So what is this AB5 law? I'm reading from the first article on Variety, AB5 could crush independent music in California. Basically, AB5 is being proposed largely in response of the ride-sharing companies like Uber and Lyft. The bill is intended to make it more difficult for so-called gig economy companies to classify workers as independent contractors rather than employees. So companies like Uber and Lyft before this law were able to classify their workers as independent contractors rather than employees. This is important because there is a massive difference between being an employee or an independent contractor, both for the employee and the employer in terms of taxes, benefits, forms to fill. Overall, the money that a company or an employer have to spend on top of the retribution that gives to the employee or the independent contractors. Unfortunately, why this law was intended for those companies that we mentioned, it's so broad that affects all musicians, all producers, mix engineers, master engineers, everyone in the music industry. Let's see how. The law is so broad that it outsized consequences for independent musicians, treating them like Uber and Lyft executives rather than their drivers. The proposed build, now law, states that any person who provides services that relate to the usual course of the hiring entity's business is an employee of the entity. This makes sense for large corporations. It does not make sense for independent artists who is trying to make music. And we all know artists work with many people to realize their vision. Producers, engineers, musicians, publicists, managers, music video creators, dancers, background vocalists, and so on. All of these figures will be affected by this. Under this law, an artist in California could become the employer of all these people. Practical example, 14, 16 years old kid making music in her bedroom with her friends, okay? She should provide punch card, time sheets, guaranteed meal breaks, healthcare, retirement benefits, paying minimum wage, overtime pay calculation, mandatory tax withholdings. Would she be able to do that? Would any independent musician right now be able to do that? Of course not. This, if not changed, could completely crash and destroy the music industry and economy in California. Because let's say you have to hire a session musician for $150 to play in one of your productions. Nobody will use anyone from California if they have to provide all of that just to play one song in one track. In 2020, the opportunities to make music independently are endless, and this law threatens to crash that innovation for the young girl in her basement recording on GarageBand who invites a friend over to play bass. She's an employer. The rapper who hired a mixing engineer to punch levels on their production, he's now an employer. The producers in a garage who hire musicians to play on a track, they are an employer. The songwriters who ask people to play on a demo so they can pitch it to an artist to cut, employers. People who organize song camps uh, where songwriters come together and write songs, employers again. 
This will force everyone who works in the music industry at any level, producers, musicians, mix engineers, also dancers, video makers, everything and everyone who gravitates around the music business to move out of California, to be able to keep working and keep doing what they do. I wanna read another very good article on this is from aristake.com. California music economy is about to crash. EM Law Need Menoyo says, this is an anti-creative economy bill for California. I've often wondered what could knock the LA music scene off its game. I think we are looking at it. This became law in January. So at the time of this video is already a law. I'm not sure by the time this video is published anything will change because of course there is a petition that I will show you at the end of the video. But the scary thing is nobody knew about this AB5 until it was passed. And we read from the article uh, Assemblywoman Lorena Gomez spread headed a bill AB5 which was intended to support worker rights, namely Uber, Lyft and DoorDash drivers, rather than making a law targeting specific companies, they basically outlawed all independent contractors with few exceptions. And we're going to see the exceptions because that's funny. It was signed into a law on September 18th, 2019 by Governor Newsom. Why haven't you heard about it? Because it was run through committee so fast that no one really had the time to process what was happening. So no, we didn't get to contact our representatives before the vote and plead with them not to vote for it or at least give the independent music industry an exemption, which is what we want at this point. How the law is written, if you want to hire a bass player to play your gig for $100, you have to put the bassist on payroll pay unemployment taxes, provide benefits, follow labor laws, get workers' compensations insurance, deduct taxes, work with a payroll company, which is expensive, W-2 that basis as they now legally will be designated your employee. Also live music, every venue in California can't just get solo artists a check anymore. You play a 45 minute set at the bootleg and make $800, well, you're now technically an employee of the bootleg. They must deduct taxes, put you and the hundreds of artists who play their venue each year on payroll for one gig. Publishing companies won't hire producers and won't be giving songwriters advances anymore in California. Independent record labels can't pay musicians, producers, engineers, or anyone else without designating them as employee. This alone would destroy the music industry. Let me, let me repeat it for you. Publishing companies won't hire producers and won't be giving songwriters advances anymore. Independent record labels can't pay musicians, producers, engineers, or anyone else without designating them as employees. This is a triple effect. The music industry could leave California in mass. Research has shown that by forcing these individuals to designate everyone they hire as an employee, it would increase cost by 30%. You thought your budget was $500 to hire the personnel for the album? Think again, it's going to cost you around $6,500. You wanna hire a drummer for $100? Now you have to take out taxes. So either you cut the drummer a check now for $80, you must withhold around 20%, or cut the drummer a check for $100, but you actually are paying out 120. Multipl now multiply that by every musician for every gig, and you're looking at thousands of dollars, if not millions lost. The article continues by saying, it is completely cost prohibitive to force musicians who are just scraping by to jump through all these hoops and pay all these fees. And it's true because most musicians are not superstar. Most musicians also have other jobs to keep uh, pursuing their passion. Just registering a corporate entity like LCC or S Corp is a minimum of $800 and could be a couple of thousand dollars a year to maintain or more. Payroll companies aren't cheap. It could run you a few hundred dollars a month. Not to mention that filing taxes for a corporate entity is extremely expensive. Uh, it makes the example of an S Corp and the accounting company charges $2,500 just to file taxes. So for every gig, $150 gig, you will have to do all this because you are 
an employee and employer if you hire someone. This law was not thought out, of course. It disproportionately affects independent musicians. Clearly, no one in California state government has ever worked a day in the music industry. I can only agree. This law, if unchanged, will single-handedly crash the California music company. This is not hyperbole. This is reality. And I agree. Record labels will start to take their business to New York, Atlanta, Nashville, elsewhere, anywhere else. Touring bands will not come to play to the state anymore because the venues may not allow solo artists to accept payment under their name, forcing them to create a corporate entity to get around the employee requirement. No touring solo artist will do this just to play a few gigs in California, which will pay much less than the cost of that corporate entity. Is literally the only one entity in the music industry to who is in favor of the AB5. I personally know of some uh, some others, but you probably never heard of the AFM because very few musicians are actually in the music in the musicians union. Sorry, the AFM cites eighty thousand members, but there are literally millions of musicians in the U.S. and Canada that are not in the union. Unless you're playing in an orchestra or major label records, or are employed by a corporation who has a deal with AFM you don't really need to be in the AFM. But according to the article, what the AFM did was convincing Assemblywoman Gonzalez that this was a good thing for the music industry. All they care about is apparently their members. Since the vast majority of musicians are not in the union, the AFM just convinced the California state government and Governor Newsom that they are looking out for musicians when in reality they are not. Obviously, they are not. Worth noting that the RIA, A2IM, and the newly formed Music Artists Coalition, comprised of a bunch of big names, fought against this bill. Based on reporting, it seems Assemblywoman Gonzalez got pissed at the RIA, so she decided that no exemptions would be made for the music industry. And now I'm going to read what the existing exemptions are, and it's hilarious that they left the music industry out. This law contains exemptions for, sit down, stay calm, lawyers, dentists, physicians, vets, psychologists, architects, private investigators, accountants, direct sales salesperson, telemarketers, fishermen, podiatrists, graphic designer artist. How a graphic designer artist has an exemptions, but not musicians. Quotes, fine artist. Note, does not include musicians. Uh, human resources administrator, marketing photographer, freelance writers, cartoonist editors, esthetician, manicurist, barber, cosmetologist, electrologist, and repo man. <laughs> but not musicians. I don't even know what to say. So for some reason, repo man, manicurist, and telemarketers are okay for exemptions, but music professionals are not. Uh, this again was taken from this very well written article on aristake.com. I will link it down below. I don't want to take credit for, for it. Of course, uh, this needs to change. And what can we do? So there is a petition on change.org that I will link down below. The petition is called Help Independent California Music Professionals Secure Exemptions Under AB5. And again, it describes all the problems and what a disaster this would be if not changed. But it also gives a couple of more examples. Musicians often wear different hats as a performers on their own or other musicians' recordings and live performances as session musicians, as instructors, producers, composers, songwriters, and bookers, and as band leaders. For example, in a given week, this is a good picture. A musician might perform one live gig under their own name and two in other bands, teach eight private lessons, produce three songs for a client involving booking a studio and session musicians, record their own songs with other live musicians, subcontract musicians, and play at a wedding. So in just that one week, the musician will be both employer and employee numerous time over in the AB5 model. This is exponentially true over the course of a year. The cost associated with AB5 would be crippling, incorporating 
or becoming an LCC is prohibitively expensive and payroll companies do not work with our business model. The work of a musician is for the most part on a per project basis and frequently the person booking us is a fellow musician. Most musicians live by piecing together numerous opportunities if for each and every one we had to be an employee or become an employer that is absolutely impossible that will make it absolutely impossible uh, clubs will switch to recorded music rather than use payroll companies composers will use the sample instrument rather than live players and much of the business will simply move to Nashville New York and Atlanta like we said but there is a lot more on the petition page I actually shout out to Amir Derek my friend uh, for pointing me that out he actually linked me the petition in the first place and it inspired this video like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I, in this video, I was just reading uh, out loud what the information that I found, which is concerning. And um, I hope this will change. I hope maybe by the time this video is out, something already changed because this is definitely, it could be definitely devastating for the music industry scene culture in california and again i want to say all over the world i hope this video was useful i hope you liked it please comment down below let me know all you know about this uh let me know what you think if you have news updates if we miss something important in this video and let me know what's your experience as a musician are you in the union are you one of the many that piece gigs together to make ends meet and um, just leave comments down below ask questions we have a great community here on mix bus tv so feel free to ask and reply each other and i myself will follow all your comments and read them all if you like the video please don't forget to leave a like thank you for watching subscribe if you haven't already see you next time